אני מבקש, I would like to invite פרופסור ג'יימס סקוט, please sir. Oh, we have to switch computers here. Yeah. To switch the card. Okay. Um, good morning, good day, actually, and very nice to be back in, in Tel Aviv, and not just because of the weather, which is really something motivating, just coming from uh, ice, the, ice, the icy uh, uh, northern uh, confines of Finland, and this is kind of a welcome change. And I uh, also welcome the, uh, the, the challenge, the ability to, to be... I thank the people who are organizing this conference who invited me and, 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 and Richard and Emmanuel to take part in this conference. The op opportunity to discuss borders um, in the security context, which is something that we don't always do, um, which I, I think it, it can be problematic because we need this kind of dialogue. We need this kind of exchange of ideas. What I'm going to do is, in, in a way, following up on what Emmanuel was talking about and how our per perception of borders, how how borders work is shifting indeed in, of course, in academic endeavor, in the academic study of borders. But uh, I'm not going to bore you with theoretical, you know, jargon-filled uh, uh, insights about what border studies is actually doing. But some of the, let's say, the, the, the information that is leaking out of the border studies uh, uh, um, uh, literature, uh, the border studies uh, research areas, in terms of <coughs> real pragmatic everyday consequences of, of shifting borders, for example, for security issues. And I think in Europe this is actually a, a rather uh, serious problem. Uh, and I'm just going to touch upon some of the issues that I think that, 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 that are salient, that might be interesting as well to, to you, um, because I think they are of a bit more universal character. Some of the issues I'm talking about are kind of focus on the European context right now, which is a special one, of course, but I think many of the bordering issues I'll be talking about have more universal uh, um, uh, uh, import. Um, number one, that uh, borders of security, as we understand them, are, are shifting, and I think this is not, not new information. Um, uh, and the, the understanding, I think, is, is kind of seeping through that when we think about security and borders, it's not just about the territory, as Emmanuel said, it's not just the territorial border, the line, or the, a line of control at a territorial uh, uh, limits, but it's really something uh, that is much more embedded in society, bordering processes, that making of the, the strategic distinction between groups, individuals, purposes, movement, which is not easy to always territorially demarcate or functionally demarcate. I think this is one of the biggest issues. Um, the fact that external and internal security challenges are increasingly connected. So we, we talk about the intermestic uh, uh, quality of security. It's very difficult to draw that line and say, OK, this is our domestic policy, and we're going to completely separate that from the international uh, arena. That's not possible, and especially a conglomerate, a, 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 a conglomerate political uh, community like the European Union knows that very well, that it cannot draw those, those, those boundaries in, 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 in such discrete terms. Um, and I think that, in fact, <clears throat> these challenges, intermesti intermesticity, let's say, of security, but also the fact that borders are territorial, but also socially embedded, part of our, they're part of our culture, and that's why borders are not going to disappear anywhere anytime soon, are, are something that can be understood as well through the prism of political, social, and also cultural borders. And I hope to provide a few insights on this. One of the, uh, in terms of security, one of the most salient uh, 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 realizations that comes out of this is the importance of information. We have been bombarded with this fake news problematic. What is real information? What is fake information? Who is being manipulated? Who is being, who is being uh, informed? 
And this is something that Europe is having a, a hell of a time dealing with. Um, but of course, it's also social questions, how society is composed in terms of its, um, its cohesion, inclusion, social solidarity, migration issues also are part of the security complex. So challenges facing the European Union, I'm not going to go into too much depth. I think most of you understand what's going on there. A composite polity that does not you know, have that uh, constitution of a nation state um, is basically only kept together by consent. Uh, it's, it's a political community that's facing multiple crises at the moment. Um, is really, in many ways, the embodiment of the crisis of modern liberal democracy. Very high principles, but oftentimes a lack of ability or will to, to, to fulfill those principles. Um, wants to see itself as a, a new actor a, for, for, for good in the world, a soft power actor that doesn't act in the same way as, for example, the United States or Russia. But more and more, it's forced to militarize its borders, for example, in, in terms of dealing with migration flows. So it's, it's kind of in between a rock and a hard place in terms of its, its, its political identity. Um, the EU is conditioned by constant tension to maintain momentum of integration and debordering within the community, at the same time satisfying local desires, local political desires for control. The, the, the fight over Catalonia, for example, the, the, elect, the electoral divisions we see in, Europe, in the European Union, the Brexit as being one extreme example of a real outcome where people are actually opting out of the political community, but also tendencies of fragmentation, people basically saying, we do not agree for a supranational form of control of borders, we need to bring that control back home. We don't need interdependence, we need independence. This is also a challenge to the EU's political identity. Um, the other thing that's a, a, a big problem is it's not only this fragmentation of allegiance, but the social solidarity, which used to be an important element of the European Union, <clears throat> that, that there's a social Europe, is something that is in, in, in inherently contested. And faith in the European social model is eroding. And this, the erosion of social solidarity means the erosion of, uh, uh, in, in many ways, consensus for open borders. Another, yet another challenge, and, and a security challenge. So, economic, political, and moral crises have weakened the EU as a political actor, internally as well as externally. And at the same time, don't forget, there are other actors out there, powerful actors, who are in influencing the trajectory of the EU's uh, border and security policies and neighboring policies. I'm thinking. I'm thinking specifically about Russia, your Russian Federation, and Turkey. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's bring this to uh, the European context and, and, and maybe a bit more, uh, a bit more concrete on some of the salient security issues that I'd like to talk about. Um, but you know, I've, I've talked a little bit about the, 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 the challenges facing the European Union. How does this look in, in terms of putting together uh, identity issues, social issues, borders? Um, it is, security is a complex issue, uh, not, not just in the European case, but in specifically in the European case. And there is no one general understanding uh, or security formula for all communities. States, groups, uh, uh, and positionality uh, is the rule, and here I'm trying to, I'll give you a little bit of insight from the, from the Finnish case, from the Finnish view, how it is positioning itself vis-a-vis -vis the European Union. One of the things that we find that is quite interesting in our research, and maybe something that was not talked about too much in the past when we connected borders to security, is identity issues. The, the notion that uh, sense of identity is also related to a sense of security. And if that is challenged, the sense of, of, being, uh, of being threatened from outside is, is incre increases. So the accentuation of perceived difference between people, cultures, and states increases within the context of socioeconomic stress and geopolitical instability. And this is, this is a big issue for multicultural societies. 
multicultural societies. Um, making identity a security issue is one of the biggest problems in, in the European context. And here again, I want to kind of bring in the question of information or misinformation, because this is also being used to help create a sense of threat where no, no threat really exists, uh, and also to create a sense of insecurity. This also relates to, uh, to everyday well-being. Welfare, job security, and a sense of, of, of purpose in society are important factors. When solidarity deteriorates, feelings of security do as well. Um, why, for example, in the case of Germany, did the right, this extreme right wing party, Alternative for Deutschland, have such a 12%, which is unheard of, has a high degree of support? Where did they have that high degree of support? In the East, where they feel abandoned by the system. And who also voted for IFD? Russian Germans, informed by Russia controlled media, like Russia Today, basically saying that uh, the mainstream parties, the Christian Democrats, the Social Democrats, are anti Russian. So it's talking directly to the diaspora Russians in Germany and weaponizing them, to use it maybe a bit in a, in a, in a bit uh, a rough way, their sentiment uh, to vote against Angela Merkel. A small example of how information is used to create a sense of insecurity in an electoral situation, basically with the idea of destabilizing uh, political consensus. But these things then come together. The, the security formula becomes incredibly complex when we put these these different elements together. So the challenge is how to relate these um, uh, uh, more clearly together. How can we deal with this? How can we develop, if we talk about policies, to policies that target resilience and cohesiveness in order to better to respond to these increasing uh, 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 form of what we might call hybrid security challenge. But it's, it really is about borders. It's about the physical borders that are not going to go away anytime soon, but it's also about borders within society between Russian Germans, uh, 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 Russians of German uh, heritage who came to Germany after 1991, got German citizenship, but who are having a hard time integrating into mainstream society to become equals. And they, of course, are not treated as equals in many cases. There are social borders, social cultural borders operating within the German case that are being manipulated by very powerful actors outside uh, uh, the German Europe EU borders, which have become also a security issue. Um, some of the member states have taken me me uh, 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 measures, their own measures, taking the matters in their own hands. For example, hung Hungary basically says the European Union is no longer able to defend its external borders, for example, against challenges such as huge flows of migrants, refugees, uh, people seeking asylum. In fact, the Hungarian government says, Brussels' position is that we should open the borders and let everybody in. Well, it's kind of a propagandistic exaggeration, of course, but this is what they're telling their populace. And said, so we are not going to have any of that and we're going to put up our fence. And they have closed, basically, the border to Serbia and Slovenia. So they put up a double barbed wire fence and militarized this border. It was a, a direct affront and a challenge to the European Union in terms of creating a cohesive sense of, you know, we, we are man managing this, the issue at our external borders. Um, so a border fence against migrants and against Brussels. Another example of, a, of, of, a, of another tricky piece in our, in our security and border, bordering puzzle. Um, going back to the EU-Russia challenge, and here, and it, because I think this is, because I don't have that much time, I'll kind of focus on this a little bit. Um, the EU-Russia challenge, I think, highlights many of the problems that uh, Europe is facing in terms of borders of security. Uh, there is this rivalry against, b between R the Russian Federation and the European Union in terms of regional influence. At least the Russian perspective is that the EU would like to move into Eurasia, which is, you know, the Russia's traditional backyard, uh, with its neighborhood policy. 
and other policies. <clears throat> the EU basically sees itself as a cooperation partner, bringing investment, bringing development, bringing you know, exchange of ideas. And here, there is a, a, a rivalry in terms of regional roles. There are ideological and social areas of contestation where the Russian government says, we, we reject European values, uh, cosmopolitan, not family-oriented, too liberal values. You know, we in Russia have our own orthodox, we have our own, this is, the Russian government has picked this up as well. We have a clash of, 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 of moral, uh, religious values. <clears throat> um, and uh, this is another area where the EU is being challenged. The expression in hybrid threats, which largely work psychologically, and one of the areas where it works is with the Russian diaspora, which is in many ways an ambiguous exploited element. So it, it's interesting because they are, can be exploited as a, so that they are seen as a fifth column within Germany. The idea is this can destabilize, make cohesion within Germany much more difficult. Um, <clears throat> we see cases of German, Russians, Finnish Russians, because Finland is also subject to the same kind of issue, pro problemat problematic. Targets of Russian media manipulation, crime, crime, uh, claims of discrimination, cultural contestations. You know, the, the, your host country is not treating you well, is the message. Finnish Russians are now being subjected to the question is, can you be a good dual citizen? Can we trust Russians to be good public servants, creating social borders that in order to erode a sense of solidarity, a, a sense of cohesion? Um, Erdogan has done a similar thing with Turks in Germany, and very powerful force in, 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 uh, in the elections. Uh, abstention rate was very high under, uh, uh, among Turkish Germans because Erdogan did not like Angela Merkel either. So these things come together and they show how, you know, the, the security complex is becoming much more socially embedded. How you need much more informationally uh, 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 transmitted. Uh, uh, another issue, one more issue that I'll briefly touch upon, as also which is something that is, is, is kind of scary in terms of the EU's perspective. Do we see a return to Cold War scenarios? Of course, that is bad news for the European Union because the European Union sees itself as a champion of a new idealism, a new kind of culture of cooperation rather than a spheres of influence, um, <clears throat> kind of a, you know, Europe versus Eurasia type of, of thinking. But um, in, the, in, in, the, in the views of many uh, uh, very influential observers, the European Union is, is by, by nature a weak actor because it is not a nation state, a nation state. And if it ignores the necessity to have a powerful military deterrent in the form of a good partnership with NATO and the United States, then it will not be able to defend itself in the face of a real out-and-out uh, out out Russian um, grab for imagining the Russia, the Russian army just makes a quick grab for some Baltic states. What is what are the EU going to do? <clears throat> These are um, uh, question, basic questioning of the EU's rationale and, it, and its security rationale in terms of lack of the, the, the real uh, resolve to back up uh, soft power uh, ideas with hard power in, in engagement. I must admit it, uh, or, or, or add that this is changing. I mean, the, the, the member states are now increasing their military budgets. Finland is definitely and they're beefing up their securities at their external borders. But still, in terms of the security co complex, it shows you that this is yet another, another issue that has to be taken, taking into consideration. How do you make that judicious measure, that judicious balance? How do you create that judicious, judicious balance between the hard and the soft security? Um, I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is Kaplan, uh, Robert Kaplan, uh, uh, a very influential intellectual of statescraft, talking about you know, you know Europe is just too weak. But I'm not going to go into uh, for time reasons. I'm not going to elaborate on this. Um, <clears throat> an interesting thing that I, I, I look at the media quite a lot because it, it, it gives you a good idea of what's what's being discussed in not only in in, in terms of uh, you know popular discussions of security and borders, but also 
what issues are salient in the political discourse. And there was just recently, partly as a, res uh, as, as a, as a result of the, the, the crisis in Crimea and Ukraine and, and Russia's ac actions there, um, there's interesting uh, discussion about Finlandization. Of course, if you're from Finland, this is not a, a word you'd like to hear very often. It's, it suggests that if you are Finlandized, you have no foreign policy anymore because you have agreed to, you know, uh, to, to not act as a, as a sovereign state. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, though, it made this polarizing comeback in Finland as well, where Finnish politicians were basically looking, listen, you know, listen, you know, we are letting ourselves being manipulated again by, for outside powers, was basically the message. Do you want to be Finlandized again as Finland? Here, um, the, the issue is, do we really control our borders? We control our physical borders, but is that enough? You know, the borders are, they are, they are much deeper, they are much more complex than, than, than we imagine. So, this is my last slide, because I, I, didn't, I don't want to take up too much time. Um, I, I hope I brought these couple of ideas together, the, the interlinked nature of border security, but also inter in domestic uh, uh, foreign uh, security challenges, and the fact that borders now are really socially, culturally defined as well, and that, and that these socially, culturally defined borders are also part of the security complex, and it's hard to disentangle them. Looking at it from a, uh, a, a Finnish perspective, you know, what can, what can you say? Of course, Finland is sensitive to this because it is a neighbor, it's always been a neighbor, it used to be part of the Russian Empire, <clears throat> before it got its independence in 1917, 100 years ago, by the way. Um, but it, it, so the laws of geography, you know, they, they, they've not been forgotten. Um, there were two wars fought. And since then, uh, Finland wants to maintain a good neighborhood, good neighbor, neighborly relations with Russia. But at the same time, <clears throat> they are not overly optimistic about dealing with Russia as a state. At the same time that the movement from, Ru from Russians to Finland has been quite immense. There's a lot of Finns in Russia now, a lot of dual citizens. There's a lot of interaction between Finland socially, culturally, economically. But the, the level of institutional political trust <coughs> is not high. There is a very clear idea that, yeah, Finland, Russia is our number one security concern. That's not going away. Um, but the Finnish policy understanding, I think, basically uh, reflects what I've said. Security is a political, but also social culture phenomenon. Control of state borders is not enough. Borders within society need to be managed better and more, and they have to be more porous. They have to be more uh, opening at the same time that they have that uh, defensive character. Societal weakness is a liability. That there is a need for secure lives and livelihoods. Robust societies are strong societies. And your enemies are working at those weak spots in your society, those cracks, those fragmenting areas where they can come in, create a greater sense of, of disenchantment, of disaffection, and thereby erode a sense of cohesion. The dual citizenship issue for Russian Finns. The question, can they be reliable public servants? Can you imagine what this means if you are a loyal Russian Finn? This message it means that you are not a full class, you know, 100 percent Finn. You are a, you, a special kind of character, category is being created for you. And here there is that people realize the, the, a danger of creating a new social border uh, which could be manipulated. So um, I think the Finnish uh, standpoint is that there is need for greater pragmatism rather than kind of a dogma, dogmatic aspect or a dogmatic approach to this. And in terms of a more broader, and this is my, my final comment, a broader kind of security related perspective, for example, dealing with Russia, the big neighbor, this is the big issue in the Finnish case, is of course, uh, we have sanctions, we have the EU sanctions against Russia, which Finland was not cra totally crazy about, uh, but they, they, you know, they said, we are an EU member state, we will go along with your sanctions, even though economically it's, it's bad news for us.
But we still believe that it's important to maintain cooperation and dialogue and keep that door open despite our differences. We have to depoliticize as far as we can the bilateral relationship. Think about societal development, think about economics, think about people. We still at the same time have to have a strong commitment to European defense and we have to think, rethink our security policies in terms of greater support for domestic resilience and cohesion against hybrid aggression from Russia. This is, comes from verbatim a uh, Finnish policy person that we talked to in, in Brussels. Uh, we need greater domestic resilience against hybrid aggression from Russia. And if you actually take that st statement and make it into a real policy, you realize that this is uh, easier said than done. But it also means that we are not just talking about traditional security in the military sense, but a much more complex kind of uh, uh, formula of borders, social development, cultural development, etc. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.